Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. We got some breaking news here. The Las Vegas Raiders have traded for offensive tackle of the New England Patriots, Justin Huron. We're going to give you the full details, everything that you need to know about this deal. I'm going to tell you who won the trade who lost the trade, how it impacts the Raiders' offensive line, how in particular it impacts guys like Thayer Munford, Jermaine Illuminor, and then at the very, very end of the show, we'll talk about the other roster move that the Raiders made because they did have to make one cut. So when you guys get Raiders news, if anything happens, make sure that you check out the Raiders report. And a good way to make sure that you never miss anything, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because I promise you, we will do a full breakdown if big-time news happens. So let's look at the trade details here. The Raiders, they receive Justin Huron and then a 2024th seventh-round pick. The New England Patriots, they get a sixth-round pick in 2024. Personally, if you're swapping this late of picks and you believe that this is a player that can help you win this season, it's a win for the Raiders. And we're still going to wait and see exactly how much of a rotation the Silver and Black decide to use. But the Raiders report is about the interaction. The interaction, but also giving the nation a voice. So get loud in the comment section right now and let me know who you think won this trade. If you believe that the Raiders won that deal, I want you to spam LV. We're going to get some Patriot fans that come across this video. Just the way the internet works. Some of them might spam NE. For me personally... This is a win for the Raiders. Late round draft picks, I get what they could be, but this was a guy drafted in the sixth round in 2020, and now you're essentially getting a, a seventh rounder, and you're getting that player on top of it. Plus, he has the relationship with Josh McDaniels. More importantly, he has the relationship with Carmen Brasillo. You add up all of those things, and then I can confidently look at you and say, the biggest eyesore on the Raiders' offensive line thus far is, has been the right tackle spot. I know, it's a shocker. He was drafted in the sixth round by New England back in 2020. He started 10 games in the last two seasons, and the fact that he's familiar with some of these coaches, it is going to go a long way. Now, before I show you the PFF grades around Huron, let's look at the Raiders' offensive line. Colt Miller, you need to step up. John Simpson at left guard has been a little bit shaky, but if Andre James is able to go this week, Personally, I think that you should put Dylan Parham in at left guard. Then you would keep Lester Cotton at right guard. If you'd plan on doing a three-way rotation between Illuminor and Munford at Huron, I am going to be a little bit curious and to see how that goes. This is going to be a three-way battle. When you look at some of his BFF grades from 2021, he played in 393 snaps. An overall grade of 56.7, which, I'll be honest, it's not great. Pass blocking grade, 45.7. Again, not good. Run blocking grade, though, of 62.9. That, in fact, is pretty good. In 2021, his stats, he had two penalties against him. He allowed one sack and then three hits. He has played on the left side. He's played on the right side of the offensive line. So this is a player who does give you some versatility. And even if he can't beat out Munford and if he can't beat out Jermaine Illuminor, I might be able to make the argument that he could actually be a little bit of an upgrade over a player like Jackson Barton, especially in the long term. You know what Jackson Barton is at this current moment, right? Like, you almost have to know. And then when you look at some of his PFF numbers in 2020, a 63.4 overall grade, a 60.0 run blocking grade, and then a or a 60.0 pass blocking, 61 run blocking grade. He can be better. He could be better, and I do think it's only going to, time's going to tell. So when you talk about the NFL draft, one of the guys that I always like and respect their minds, obviously Tom Downing's the best in the biz, but then Lance Zerloin is another person who I do respect. And this is what he had to say about her on back when he was being debated during the NFL draft. The entire breakdown was this. Heron is flexible and athletic with the foot quickness to compete in a camp as a zone-blocking guard. However... He's often in a state of flux and having to fight for survival due to suspect hand usage and body control. He may not have enough play strength to withstand NFL defensive tackles in one-on-one -on -one situations, but he does have intriguing athletic traits and may be looked at at some developmental prospect. So that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing a six foot five, 305 pound dude who could be a project. If, I, if I'm going to give any offensive line coach in the world a project player, here you go. 
It's Carmen Brasillo. So if you believe that he is a project guy that could help you out long term, go for it. If he's an offensive tackle, this could also give you the ability to put somebody like Jermaine Illuminor in at guard. Because personally, I've watched Jermaine Illuminor play guard before. I think he's better at guard than he is right tackle. So if you can then put Illuminor in at guard, that helps out your interior offensive line. This is a move that helps out the overall Raiders line. Here's another question, though. Do you think he even plays, right? Because when you make a deal like this, you're giving up those late-round draft picks. That tells you what the other NFL team thought. I know when I saw offensive tackle trade for the New England Patriots go down, I was like, oh, wow. Did Isaiah win happen? The answer to that is obviously no. But do you think he's even going to play P for play, or you can type W for won't. Now, something that I want you guys to start doing more of, because personally, I find it to be a lot of fun, is to make bets on all NFL games, like Raiders games. I know it's kind of sucked recently, but you know what? I'm still going to put my money where my mouth is. Why? Because we got the best damn deal on the internet. So if you go to chatsports.com slash Raiders, which the only way you're going to get the deal is if you go to chatsports.com slash Raiders and you use promo code Raiders125, you get that 125% deposit bonus that simply nobody can compete with. You put down $100, you get $125 for free to bet with. And it's a must-win game. When well, the Raiders have had their backs up against the wall, in years past, they've answered the call. <sighs> I'm going to hope that they answer the call this week. And the last time that I checked, Raiders, one-point favorites. The over-under in this game was set at 45 and a half. Tennessee lost to the Giants, and they got blown out against Buffalo. I get that this game is at home for Tennessee, but you know what? They are technically on a shorter week. They are. So I'm going to bet on the Raiders. The over-under, though, is something that I don't know if I'm going to touch. Now, when you brought in Huron, my initial thought process was like, all right, does this mean that he's going to replace Jermaine Illuminar? So far this upcoming season, overall PFF grade. Obviously, not all that spectacular when you think about how Jermaine Illuminar ends up ranking in terms of other players at his position. Right now at the offensive tackle spot, there's been 66 tackles in the NFL, according to the PFF, that have played enough snaps that warrant a grade. Right now, Jermaine Illuminor is ranked 56 out of 66. He's got a run blocking grade of 55.3, a pass blocking grade of 51.4. Overall, somehow, it comes out to about 55.1. When you look at the overall offensive line pass blocking grades, this is how it's stacked up. Personally, I think the run blocking for the Raiders at times has looked pretty good. Josh Jacobs has been extremely impressive to me from top to bottom. But the way that this offense is going to click, the way that this offense is going to take that next step is by giving Derek Carr more time and giving those skilled position players like Waller, Renfro, Devontae Adams more time to get down the field, run the routes, and give Carr a little bit more confidence. Could you potentially be replacing Thayer Munford, who, according to the PFF, has played bad? I'll say this, which I've said before. I watched Munford's first game. I 100% disagree with Munford's PFF grade in week one. Week two, on the other hand, he wasn't very good. Point blank simply was not very good. 31.2 overall grade, and for Munford, he hasn't even played quite enough to be able to warrant an actual overall ranking on PFF, but in 37 snaps total, a 36.6 run blocking grade, a 49.9 pass blocking grade. Nothing to write home about whatsoever. So now you make a trade for Justin Huron where you give up a 2024 seventh round pick, or you get a 2024 seventh round pick, you give up a six rounder in 2024. It might be a little bit of a, a risk in terms of trying to rely on those three players to hold down the right side of the offensive line. It's cheap though. He knows Josh McDaniels. He knows Carmen Brasillo. And Purse, I think that's overall why the Raiders decided to make this move here to take a chance on a guy that they drafted in the sixth round in 2020, a player who is a big-time project. But guess what? Sometimes projects end up working out. So what do you all think here? Should the Raiders make another move? Do you believe that the Silver and Black need to add another player? Why for yes and for no? Because me personally, I think the answer to that is yes. I said on my live show on Tuesday that the other moves that I want to see the Silver and Black make before the Titans game if Denzel Perriman is unhealthy and if Bilal Nichols, who's battling that injury right now, if, if they are, in fact, unable to go, I want them to add a run stopper. I want them to add an interior defensive lineman or another linebacker that can stop the run because even though Derrick Henry is averaging 3.1 yards per carry, he's Derrick Henry. 
And if you get beat by Henry, I'm going to be mad because right now Ryan Tannehill in that offense, you make them one-dimensional and you will simply beat them. In terms of another move that did happen already today, this one's coming in from Ian Rappaport. And the corresponding move, because when you made the trade, he went to the 53-man roster. The Raiders had 53 guys. The Raiders are releasing defensive back Javelin Guidry to clear the roster spot. If he's not claimed... He'll go to the Las Vegas Raiders practice squad and could be game day activation. He could be a game day activation, though I personally like uh, Nikhil Roby Coleman more than I like Gidry. Gidry does have some his, in, insane athletic ability. He ran a 4.2940 at the combine. Has been lost a little bit with the New York Jets. And when you look at some of his PFF grades from back in 2021, Gidry an overall grade of 55.9. Run defense grade, pass rushing grade, right around 53. The coverage grade, which is obviously the one I care about, especially if you're going to play in the secondary, 56.8. His coverage stats in 2021. Quarterbacks at times would pick on him. The passer rating was over 110. Targeted 41 times, gave up 30 grabs for 345 yards and three touchdowns. But his athletic ability and his special teams value because of that speed is one of the biggest reasons why the Raiders like him. And since the Raiders lost Anthony Averett, who also very quick twitchy, good athlete on the interior when you need him to be to cover some of those speedier receivers, that's why Gidry initially was added. So even though these guys aren't a part of the Raiders, Jeremy and I, we're going to be live for Steelers at the Cleveland Browns on Thursday. Okay, so keep that in mind. Yeah, Thursday. Jeremy's whispering in my ear tonight. No, not tonight. On Thursday, we're going to be live, so join in. The way that we've been doing our Thursday night watch parties is simple. We go live about an hour early. We talk about the news and rumors that happened today. We do a mailbag like we usually do during a live show, and then we hang out, we party, we have some cold drinks, and simply we just watch the football game. And if you guys want to get wild with me, remember, we can always do that. To make sure that you never miss anything going on around this team, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MitchellRen365. And we do 50-50 raffles for Thursday night football and Sunday games. So add me as a friend on Venmo. It's a free app to download, transfer money on at MitchellRen365. And who knows, you might find yourself a winner during our 50-50 raffle.